Welcome back in everybody. We are halfway through the month of December, day 15 of our 25 Drams of Christmas. Today, we are back with another Jim Beam product, Jim Beam Black Label. Now, this Jim Beam Black is extra aged. Um, right on it, it says extra aged bourbon. And it's similar to the white label, but the only difference being it's a little extra aged. So, going into this here, um, this is roughly six years. Now, if you can't tell already, I've got Jim Beam White Label sitting right next to it. We're going to do a side-by-side. -side. Um, if you haven't figured this out already, I like to drink whiskey a little bit. So if I ever get a chance to do something side-by-side, -side, I'm always going to do it. Because, why not? So that's going to happen right now. Um, but that's, I mean, that, that's what this Black Label is. It is just an older version of the Jim Beam White Label. So on average, Jim Beam White Label is going to be four years. That is um, the age on that. The black used to actually have an eight year age statement, but Jim Beam went through a big boom, as did every single whiskey producing company, and they didn't have enough product to keep up, so they took that eight year age statement off. Now it's about six years. So it's still extra aged, um, just not quite the level it used to be. But let's see if it's, um, if it's good or not. Now I've never actually had Jim Beam Black Label. I don't think, if I have, I don't remember it. So I'm very curious to see how this compares with the white label. So let's start with color here on this. Let me take these off. If you didn't notice, the Bourbon Junkies glass, they get the Jim Beam white label. Color in my light, honestly, almost identical. Um, maybe the white label is just a shade lighter. Just a shade lighter, but they are really, really close. Not distinguishably, di distinguishably different. So um, nothing too much here. Mash bill on this, if I didn't mention, 77% corn, 13% rye, and only 10% barley. So that is different than the Knob Creek mash bill and some of the other mash bills that Jim Beam uses. So let's go into it, guys. Hmm. So as I remember a big, well, let's just do it right now. Because I got a port already. As I remember a big nutty note in the white label. Not as much of a pronounced Jim Beam nuttiness on the black label, actually. Seems like more of a well-balanced caramel vanilla oak on initial initial nose. Definitely a lot more alcohol burn on the, um, the white label as well, which this is only 80 proof. Proof on the black label is actually 86 proof, so it's amplified in proof a little bit. Fortunately, it's not really translating to alcohol burn though, which is good. So, um, nice balance, really. I mean, it doesn't smell complex at all, but I mean, it smells decent. I'm not getting the off-putting alcohol burn I was with the, the white label, so let's give it a sip. Cheers, everyone. Happy day 15. Hmm. Um... Meh, uh, it's, it's got the alcohol burn on the palate for me. It tastes almost youthful. Six years is not a small amount of time um, to be aged for whiskey, for bourbon at least. It's it's really not, I mean, it's not bad. I've had some craft stuff that's two year old that's or less that's good and some that's not good. So six is not a short amount of time. It's not really an overwhelming off-putting, you know, alcohol burn. Let's go do uh, the white label next. Almost nothing on the nose. Even compared to just the black label to the Jim Beam white label, the, the white label is really just like drinking water. I hate to say that, but it, as a whiskey drinker now, um, it's so thin. I mean, so thin. At least I got a little better mouth coating from the black label. A little more, like maybe three noted, you know, vanilla, caramel, little bit of oak and a little better mouthfeel, whereas White Label just was like drinking some high quality H2O. I mean, we're comparing apples to oranges. Um, we're, we're comparing apples to apples, like we are, because they're the same line. But you have to think this is a $15 bottle, Jim Beam White Label is. About a $25, 20 to $25 for the Black Label. Either one, I think I would take several other whiskeys ahead of. 
I would. Um, especially if it's, if it's the higher end, about $25. I can get Wild Turkey 101 for cheaper than that, and six and a half years for Wild Turkey 101 compared to six years for the Black Label. It's not even a comparison to me. Let's go one more sip. Little bit of oak, caramel vanilla, but even the mouthfeel is not much now. More than the white label, but uh, that's not saying much. So for my money, I, I would look elsewhere, personally. Um, if you haven't had the black label, sure, give it a try. I mean, if you get it at a bar, it's probably gonna be pretty dirt cheap. Three, four bucks a pour, maybe. For that, if you're gonna get a one, two ounce pour, sure. I mean, it'll get the job done. It's still 86 proof, you know? But if you're looking for a little more complexity, I would even move up to something like Knob Creek 100. You know, I think that's definitely a, it is, it's definitely a much better whiskey in my opinion. Um, I have really heard with the Jim Beam line, at least, that the sweet spot is gonna be like the distiller's cut or the distiller's edition. There's so many variants of the Jim Beam line now with flavored whiskeys and things they're doing. But I've heard distillers is really good. If anyone has had that, please do let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that because I have not actually tried that either. But everyone says, oh, that's good. And I can't just go pick up a bottle of that. So I'm curious to hear if I should seek one out or not. So as far as Jim Beam goes, you know, it's cheap, but um, you can get better. You can get better whiskeys for the price. And I would do that if you can. Thank you all so much for joining me for day 15 of my whiskey advent calendar. Now, as I mentioned, we're doing the 25 Dreams of Christmas. This is the turning point in the um, in the series. So at this point on, we are starting to go up in proof. So most from here on out are gonna be either 100 plus or they're gonna be a little more expensive, one of the two. So this is kind of the turning point where things start to get a little higher end. You might have trouble finding some of these bottles, but a lot of them are still gonna be attainable and at least things you can find on the shelf. So I hope you're having a great time with this series. Please do let me know down in the comments below if there's something else you wanna see. You know, this calendar is subject to change so I can add things in if you want me to. Um, so please do let me know. I appreciate y'all hanging out today. I will see you tomorrow for a whiskey that is up in proof, as I mentioned, and actually comes out of Jim Beam as well, but it's a little bit different, and um, it's one I really like. So see you all tomorrow. Stay insane, everyone.